Welcome everybody to PlatformCon 2024. Super excited to be here and we are going to talk about a species that is often forgotten but you shouldn't forget them. It's about the infrastructure platform engineer and why I believe every single platform team has to have the ambassadors from the infrastructure and operation teams in their group to make sure we are building platforms that are serving all users to the best of their ability. Now, this is not happening at the moment. And there is this fun new game in town that can explain why it's not happening. The vast majority of platforms that I am personally observing today are, let's take everything we have right now and let's put a portal on top. And there is nothing wrong with the portals. They're doing a great job, but they're often getting abused. You are not actually using them to build platforms that show a return on investment. Very often they're used to build platforms that are, yeah, single player mode, if you want, optimized on the experience of one user group. Infrastructure Tetris can actually act as a wonderful example and showcase this. Infrastructure Tetris means you have a portal with a scaffolding functionality and then you have a bucket of resources. It's an infinitely deep bucket with an incredible amount of very expensive resources from all sorts of um, suppliers and vendors. And the game goes, you click on the scaffolding button and create new uh, resources and you have to hit the missing spot in that bucket. Now, absolutely delightful for the developer, not incredibly delightful for the infrastructure teams. Why is it not super delightful? Because somebody has to maintain all of those things that you create. And somebody has to make sure that the Redis that was so easy to put to life is also, you know, um, updated and secured in production and lifecycle managed and then put to sleep if you don't need it anymore. This design means there is an incredible um, pressure on the operation teams that have to maintain that misunderstood degree of self-service and freedom. Now, I was recently sitting next to an infrastructure guy at uh, Amazon reInvent, a veteran who had been doing this for 20 years, started in networking and then had to, you know, build large data centers, then suddenly move to the cloud, now deal with an incredible amount of stuff that gets shifted left. There is a lot of pressure on the infrastructure and operation teams. They don't get a lot of credit for what they're doing. They are often the scapegoats and they and often we design things at their expense. And from my observation, the exact same thing is happening again in platform engineering. And that is something that has to stop. It is often because they are not considered functional complexity, if you want. They don't deliver the business logic. They seemingly don't uh, deliver the actual return on investment. They don't build the features. They're just building the stuff underneath that has to be there and it somehow has to work. But the problem is, if you don't take that serious, this is going to slow everybody down. Second, they often don't have the buying power. They're only a cost center of never ending resource costs that pile on top of each other where the application developers often have the budget and that is a systematic problem in the design of engineering organizations. Platform engineering, and this is in my opinion absolutely imperative, is a multiplayer game. We can never optimize the experience of one group at the expense of the other group and this thinking has to be ingrained as we are designing architectures for internal developer platforms. If you zoom in at the bottom, we of course have the very important persona of the developer. They come with pain points like missing self-service, cognitive load, waiting times, the fact that they're slow. But we also have this other group with their pain points, the infrastructure and operation teams with a low degree of sanitization that means that they have to go through maintenance of 100 different versions of Postgres in staging. 
ticket operations. They have to work through repetitive tickets, manual review cycles, insecure configurations, cost spiraling that they are often made responsible for. I think in platform engineering, there are two big value drivers, automation and standardization. And I believe that good design means that a good team design of platform engineering teams means that the different user personas send their ambassadors, if you want, their spokesperson. The developers send the DevX platform engineers and the infrastructure and operation teams send the infrastructure platform engineering engineers. And I encourage you to think about it when you design these teams. And if you do not have an infrastructure platform engineering team on your uh, platform engineering group, then you should do this right now. And of course, we should never forget that together we're only serving the organization. Our reason to exist is that we want to bring the time to market down. We want to reduce the cost. We want to ship more features in a smaller period of time. And we want to boost innovation. The more innovation we have, the more features we have, the faster we can adopt to changing market environments. Now, I want to point you at a fantastic conversation that I had the pleasure of having to, with Kelsey Hightower, the man, the myth, the legend, who said a very interesting sentence, silos are fantastic. Now, you can find this talk here at PlatformCon 2024. If you haven't done so, go watch this. And what Kelsey is, sa is saying here sounds very provocative, but makes so much sense. He doesn't say that people shouldn't have conversations about how to improve. Of course they have. But if you have something that you've done or the organization has done 150 times, transactional things, this should not be a conversation. Kelsey says that if you are going to an airport, you just want to board a plane. You don't want it shift left that you now have to load your own baggage or you have to fly the plane yourself or you have to do the engineering. This is why you have airlines. And he's also pointing out that there is nothing wrong with separation of concern. Our industry, and I'm always saying this, is the only industry in the world that has actually reduced the amount of specialization. Silos are fantastic as long as you optimize the handover point in between them. And that handover point are well-designed APIs, well-designed interfaces, well-designed platform experiences. Now, I believe in separation of concern, but to be more precise, I believe in fluid separation of concern. That means wherever possible, we are opting for separation of concern, but we leave the freedom to certain groups to bleed into the other side. The cloud ops, the infrastructure ops, the DB teams, they are primarily responsible for managing the infrastructure. And that's just fine because that is what they've been trained on. This is what they're focusing on every day. The product teams are responsible primarily for the service code. They are looking at how to design stuff, how to design business logic and getting that shipped. There are product teams where that are taking over responsibility for the infrastructure, but there has to be a reason for that. And a reason is not, I like to do it. A reason is it makes my application better. Now, in this design, the infrastructure teams have the are uh, actually um, have the ambassador called the infrastructure platform engineer. And the job of that ambassador is to talk to the infrastructure groups and figure out how to help them design their resources and products against common interfaces and APIs. And the DevX platform engineer's job is to make sure that they're actually understanding the need of the different product teams and making sure they can interface and consume those APIs effectively. So those two functions, the DevX platform engineer and the infrastructure platform engineer, they have to form a tight bond and alliance and build a multiplayer game platform. I want to show you how you could think about architectural design of such a platform. This is the standard reference architecture. Now here in this case, stripped all of its different tools. You can 
insert the tool that you like most. I just want to point our attention here to the version control. This is how a repository structure looks if we have separation of concern. We have application source code repositories that are primarily owned by the developers. And we have platform source code repositories that are primarily owned by the infrastructure platform engineers, by the infrastructure groups, by the DB teams. Now, the application source code contains the workload source code and the logic, etc., and it contains for, contains, for instance, an abstract format such as a workload specification. And the platform source code con contains the conventions, the infrastructure as code, the Lego blocks of which golden paths are made. Now, let's actually zoom in. The developers could use a format such as SCORE. SCORE is a open source specification that we've just donated to the CNCF and it is what we call environment agnostic. It's a way for developers to describe what their workload needs and the resources it depends on. We can see here I have a workload called product service. It requires a Postgres, S3 and DNS. This sits next to the workload source code. It replaces all app and infrastructure configurations, the Terraform files, the Helm charts, etc. You can convert it into local running score compose, or you send it against your CI pipeline, you indicate the context, and the backend of the platform can now transform this into something that the resource plane can understand. The infrastructure and operation teams are defining things, for instance, in resource definitions. Um, the, they're defining the rules and they're saying if the developer requests a Redis and this is going to an environment of type staging, use this parameterized Terraform uh, module to create or update our resources. And then the backend of a platform, a platform orchestrator, for instance, can bring these things together. The infrastructure and operation teams define those resource definitions, say how the workload should be configured, how the sidecar should be added, etc., and the developers send their abstract request through the pipeline. The orchestrator analyzes the context and says, okay, I need this resource definition, this, this, and this, and from the combination builds a, a, a cyclic resource graph for every environment and every deployment, brings those two worlds together. Those are the intelligent designed handover points that our infrastructure and DevX platform engineers have uh, built for us. And uh, it's then creating the app and infrastructure configurations, managing the sign off, etc. So to recap this, if a developer now wants to add a cache of type Redis, they add two lines of code here, they push this through the CI pipeline, the orchestrator says, okay, for staging, um, and type Redis, we are going to identify this resource definition, and this allows us to build the next resource graph, in this case, adding our Elastic Cache for Redis, a managed service, regenerating the app and infrastructure configurations, wiring everything up, making sure it's secure, making sure it's policy checked, making sure we can securely deliver this. And this design that we're seeing right here now is actually multiplayer mode. It is a delightful experience for the developers, but it doesn't go at the expense of the infrastructure teams. The contrary holds true. The, develop, the infrastructure groups now have these common ways of defining things. They can say, hey, I wanna update all my Redis in staging. They do this in one place and the all the resource graphs that are consuming that resource definition can update with the next deployment. High degree of standardization, high degree of sophisticated automation, and all of this because we've really taken the need and the pain and the value drivers of our different uh, user personas in config into consideration. I hope this help helps and helped. Good luck out there. Enjoy PlatformCon 2024. Good luck on your platform engineering journey. If you have any questions, let us know. Looking forward to hearing from you.